Hey, what's up, y'all? My name's Evan Greer. I am the director of Fight for the Future. We're a nonprofit digital rights organization based here in the United States. But in my other life, I'm a punk musician, and I'm super grateful to the organizers of RightsCon for inviting me to play some music for y'all to kick off this year's amazing event and get everyone psyched for all of the awesome learning and discussion that is going to happen over the next few days. Um, I'm going to kind of try and keep this a little bit different. I'm sure you're really tired of Zoom performances by now. Um, so I'm going to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to play a few songs for you just like this playing to the camera. Uh, I'm also going to show you a music video that I've been working on and actually let you uh, sit in while I record on a new song. So I'm uh, going to try and keep it moving, keep it interesting. And uh, I am going to play a song to kick us off off of my new album, Spotify is Surveillance, which is out now on Get Better Records and Don Giovanni Records. I'll talk a little bit more about that title and why I named it that and the campaign associated with it in just a minute. But first, here's a song about uh, missing being together in person. It's obviously, I wish that we were hanging out um, in a room uh, instead of uh, me kind of coming to you through the screen here. So if you miss live music, you miss parties, you miss gatherings, uh, and you feel sad about it, I promise you this song will make you miss them even more and feel even sadder about it. Sorry. <laughs>
Thanks. That's my song, Back Row, off my new album, Spotify is Surveillance. So let's talk about that album title. Why did I call it that? So I originally wanted to simply draw attention to the fact that Spotify, as a dominant streaming service, really employs the same surveillance capitalist business model of companies like Facebook and YouTube, where their profit is derived from harvesting our data and using it to manipulate us. In the case of Spotify, they're uh, harvesting a tremendous amount of data about, obviously, the music that we listen to. And from that, they're inferring all kinds of things and really conducting what I would argue is a form of emotional surveillance in terms of listening to the tempo of the music we're listening to, the layers of it, what it sounds like, the feel of it, and then using that to algorithmically recommend music to us that they think we want to hear. Um, and uh, I, I titled the album Spotify Surveillance, and then Spotify really it seems like they were just trying to prove my point because they came out with a patent to use artificial intelligence-powered voice recognition software, I'm not making this up, to literally listen to your conversations and use your biometric uh, voice data to infer things about you. They claim to be able to infer, for example, your gender based on your voice, which is hugely problematic uh, for trans folks and non-binary folks and uh, a lot of other people. Um, they also claim to be able to recommend music to you based on your accent, which is profoundly racist. Uh, and the whole scheme would have been just incredibly invasive. Fortunately, um, our good friends at Access, who help organize this event, as well as my organization, Fight for the Future, and dozens of artists and musicians, including Tom Morello, the guitarist of Rage Against the Machine, and Laura Jane Grace from Against Me, and so many others, um, put out a letter and have been running a campaign um, calling out this patent. Spotify has since said that they're not planning to use it, but we're still pushing to get a commitment from them that they're never going to implement this type of invasive voice recognition surveillance uh, as part of their application. So um, to kick off that campaign, that original Stop Spotify Surveillance.org campaign that Fight for the Future launched, I released a music video for a song off of my album called Surveillance Capitalism, um, obviously relevant to uh, RightsCon and this event. Um, and instead of playing it for you, I'm actually going to show you that music video that I produced with a fantastic video creator named Michael Flowers. So stick around for a second. And here is the music video for my song Surveillance Capitalism. We live in capitalism. Its power seems inescapable. So did the divine right of kings. Once consent was manufactured, now it's harvested for clicks. Algorithms make decisions Filter bubbles make us sick We're all connected to machines Hate every second but we just can't look away We all want to be seen but behind the screen There's a nightmare dressed up as a dream And we can't wake up Private company Paved it over, put up walls 
Now it's billboards, big bucks, shopping malls Hate every second, but we just can't look away We don't wanna be seen, but behind the screen There's a nightmare dressed up as a dream And we can't wake up Neither math nor machines can extract four centuries of white And we can't wake from up Neither math nor machines can extract four centuries of white supremacy from American policing. Simply inserting digital technologies into discriminatory policing without addressing its fundamental flaws can only serve to supersize that discrimination, can only serve to reduce community safety, and can only violate the civil rights of the most vulnerable among us. Nothing else can happen. So that was my song, Surveillance Capitalism. I hope you enjoyed the video by Michael Flowers. Um, Want to shout out some of the folks that I sampled there. That intro audio clip is, of course, from Ursula K. Le Guin. Uh, and then we had some digital rights celebrities on the track. Um, give it up for Jacinta Gonzalez of Mi Gente, who was uh, sampled there, as well as Malkia Cyril, uh, formerly of Media Justice and a hero of mine, and I'm sure many of yours, um, who was the outro there as well. So um, I, it's been really fun for me to be able to play with... Um, um, clipping audio and using that in um, music and recordings as a way to kind of convey a point that maybe I couldn't quite get to rhyme. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to play another song for y'all. This is called The Tyranny of Either Or. And it's a bit of an anthem for trans and non-binary folks. And uh, I, I'm going to sing it for y'all now in honor of Pride Month. Um, so shout out to all of the queers and trans folks and others um, out there celebrating. Um, but this song and the video that um, I made for it, which I'm not going to show you now, um, is really about kind of getting back in touch with the revolutionary radical roots of the modern day pride movement. Um, it kicks off with an audio clip from Sylvia Rivera, uh, a trans woman of color who got up on stage at Christopher Street Liberation. Day, um, one of the uh, predecessors to modern day pride parades, and essentially excoriated the mainstream gay rights movement for failing to fight for the most vulnerable members of our community, particularly trans folks, people of color, sex workers, uh, and folks without homes. Um, so I, I, I channel Sylvia in this song, and it's a bit of an open letter to TERFs and other transphobes, uh, and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Second, we are born, we're forced to fight for every breath The tyranny of either or You blame the victim, our existence is a threat But we were not the ones who declared war Every year we read the names of those we've lost Every day we're sick and tired And we just want to be ourselves We just want to live our lives And we refuse to comply With your pathological need to categorize Weaponized biology, twist science into bigotry Anything to justify Your projected insecurities become policies of purity You debate about our right to be alive When we defend ourselves, you call it an attack why can't you see our liberations intertwined? And we just
just want to be ourselves. We just want to live our lives. And we refuse to comply with your pathological need to categorize. The tyranny of either or. The tyranny of either or. The tyranny of either or. Tyranny of either or. Okay, hey, what's up? I am back. I'm going to do something a little bit different for you all now. I'm going to actually show you a little bit of my process for how I record music at home, um, which has been really important for me as an activist because um, I don't have a ton of time to go into a fancy studio and I don't have a ton of money for it either. Um, and since my music is now not my full source of income, it's been really empowering to. Um, be able to kind of just make music at home. So I recorded my entire album, Spotify is Surveillance, on my laptop um, using GarageBand, which is free software that um, comes uh, on most MacBooks. And um, it's, you know, pretty simple. And I had basically no experience recording myself before getting into this. Um, but I kind of just learned as I went. And I'm going to show you all a little bit of the process of how I do that by actually showing you a new song that I'm working on. And I'm going to let you kind of watch me record the bass for it. So let's do that. All right, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a little bit about my process here for how I record. So um, this is GarageBand. It's, like I said, free software that comes uh, on a lot of computers. And um, I recorded my entire album in this. So, um, you know, if you're out there and you like, like making music, um, keep in mind that you don't necessarily need uh, a whole lot to make stuff that can sound pretty good these days. Um, so, uh, you can see I've got kind of a bunch of layers here, and anybody who's kind of recorded before is familiar with that. So I've got drums here up at the top. Um, I've got bass, um, which is actually just scratch. I'm going to delete this now because I'm going to record some bass uh, with you all, um, kind of show you what that looks like. Uh, I've got a couple layers of acoustic guitars. You can see they're all muted right now because I'm not using them. Um, I've got a few different layers of vocals. You can see the vocals have some effects on them. I've got one with kind of a megaphone effect, one um, with just like a straight narration, and then a high harmony, which has some compression on it and some reverb. Um, and I've got a bunch more layers of vocals for this second section of the song with a harmony and things like that. Um, then I've got a bunch of guitars. Uh, I've got one guitar with kind of a delay effect on it. I've got one guitar with some distortion on it, classic punk rock feel. And then one guitar with this stadium spread effect, which is sort of like very U2 reverby distortion kind of vibe. Um, and then I have an echo guitar that you can see is also muted because I'm still working on that one. Um, but basically what I do is I always start with one of these drum tracks. And uh, I do play some live drums on the album, but most of it is actually just this um, GarageBand default um, AI drums. This is maybe one of the only, the few good uses of AI um, out there is um, these kind of AI drummers. And basically they have real drummers that they recorded. And you can kind of drag and drop around here to select um, you know, whether you want to emphasize the cymbals or the toms um, or different parts of the drums, you can adjust like where the fills are. Um, usually if I want to accent that, I will use, um, uh, I'll just create another um, drum track that I control with a MIDI keyboard so I can like add a cymbal here or like make a fill sound exactly the way I want it to sound. Um, but that's actually how I do most of my drums um, these days is using um, these pre-programmed drums and then kind of just um, adjusting them um, as I see fit. But as you can see, the song currently has no bass on it. So I'm going to record the bass right now and let you all watch. And, um, and as you do, you can see the song and hear the song. Um, this song is called Pink Washing, and I'm trying to get it out this month for Pride. Um, it's about the ways that authoritarian governments around the world have often weaponized um, discussions around oppression of LGBTQ folks to justify militarism, to justify uh, colonization, to justify imperialism. Uh, and we've seen that, of course, um, over the last few weeks with the renewed violent state attacks on 
uh, Palestinians and the people of Gaza, where um, those who are justifying or defending those attacks um, are often pointing to things like uh, the presence of LGBTQ people in the Israeli military as if that uh, somehow justifies these human rights violations, uh, when of course it doesn't. Um, so this song speaks a bit to that and to that trend uh, from the U.S. government and many other governments around the world, um, and it is called Pinkwashing, and I will, just as a content warning, say that it does have reclaimed transphobic and homophobic slurs in it, so just be aware of that. All right, let's play some bass. I know that the wait has been very, very difficult for you all, but finally, here is the banjo. I know you were waiting for it, um, but I'm going to sing um, a, a, an old labor song, actually not a particularly old labor song, one that I wrote um, maybe 15 years ago or so um, that I used to sing with my dear friend, Ann Feeney, who passed away from COVID um, a, a number of months ago. Go look up um, her obituary. She was an incredible uh, activist and musician and, and a huge inspiration to me. Um, but I'm going to sing this song um, because I think there's been a huge awakening as we've seen among workers um, at tech companies around the world. And we've seen how um, employees and workers coming together um, can not only improve their own working conditions, but where we've seen workers um, standing in solidarity, um, fighting uh, to ensure that the technology that they're making is not being used to violate human rights. We saw employees at Microsoft and Amazon pushing back on their contracts with law enforcement and military agencies, pushing back on their uh, selling and development of facial recognition and other types of surveillance technologies. Um, and that solidarity is powerful and important. Um, so here's a little song about solidarity that I wrote, and it's called The Picket Line Song. Oh, I would never walk across a picket line 
Solidarity forever don't mean just sometimes. Long live that union, cross my heart and hope to die. If I should ever walk across a picket line. Well, my mother never told me what was right or what was wrong. Never taught me to play banjo, never taught me to write songs. The one thing that she taught me I'll remember for all time. And that's that you should never walk across a picket line. Oh, I would never walk across a picket line. Solidarity forever don't mean just sometimes. Long live that union, cross my heart and hope to die. If I should ever walk across a picket line. Well, she took me to that warehouse where the workers were on strike. The company had called in scabs to break the union's might. Mom went to the front and she addressed those greedy slime. Said, I dare any of you men to walk across this picket line. Oh, I would never walk across a picket line. Solidarity forever don't mean just sometimes. Long live that union, cross my heart and hope to die. If I should ever walk across a picket line. Well, one of them came forward, and he had something to say. No woman will stand between me and one day's pay. I don't care about the others, no, I'm taking what is mine. With that, he tried to walk across our union's picket line. Oh, I would never walk across a picket line. Solidarity forever don't mean just sometimes. Long live that union, cross my heart and hope to die. If I should ever walk across a picket line Mom called him a dirty scab and gave him two pieces of her mind She picked up and she threw every rock that she could find And when he called the cops on her, she kicked his behind And said that's what you get when you walk across a union's picket line Oh, I would never walk across a picket line Solidarity forever don't mean just sometimes Long live that union, cross my heart and hope to die If I should ever walk across a picket line And I can still remember what my mother used to say We're fighting for a better world, not just for better pay and if we stick together, then we'll win this fight in time As long as we don't walk across each other's picket lines I would never walk across a picket line Solidarity forever don't mean just sometimes Long live that union, cross my heart and hope to die If I should ever walk across a picket line If I should ever walk across a picket line There you go, the Picket Line song. You can find my recording of that uh, with Anne Feeney singing on, on it on Bandcamp. That's it for the banjo, sorry. <laughs>All right, a little bit of a different microphone here because this is just not a song that you can scream into a condenser mic. A little bit weird to do this sitting down, but uh, I'm going to give it a try. This song is called Emma Goldman Would Have Beat Your Ass, and it goes out to all the authoritarians out there. They're coming for you, and they're going to bring you down. What do you think about Russia, Miss Goldman? <laughs> Posting videos of Andrew Cuomo. He's so sexy, he's so strong. You ignore the strikers, the deaths and rikers. George W. Bush, you fucking frauds. You betrayed the working class. Hey, hey, hey. And the Goldman would have beat your ass. Sharing memes, snake emojis, and victory at war. Bernie Sanders in your
your dreams Systems rotten to the core You should have listened to crap Emma Goldman would have beat your ass Resistance, what a fucking joke You blame the Russians You wave the flag You call for censorship and call it woke Your half-baked liberal politics are trash hey, 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 hey. Emma Goldman would have beat your ass hey, 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 hey. You should have listened to crap Goldman would have beat your ass! Anarchism, a social philosophy which aims at the emancipation, economic, social, political, and spiritual of the human race. All right, I'm just going to do one more song for y'all here. Thanks so much for tuning in, and thanks so much again to the awesome organizers of RightsCon for hosting this event and for inviting me to share a little bit of this other side of myself with you all. Um, this last song is called Willing to Wait, and I wrote it early in the pandemic. Um, and it's really just about that sense of longing, that sense of loss um, of being apart. And um, I am willing to wait for the next uh, in-person RightsCon. So thanks again so much to all of you. My name is Evan Greer. I'm the director of Fight for the Future and a trans queer musician based in Boston in the United States. Uh, and, and this has really been delightful. And I'm excited to hang out with you all in the chat and um, see what comes next. So this song is called Willing to Wait. Our connection is shaky. The audio drops. The video's there. But it's never enough. There's no substitute. For touching your face. There's not much to say. Shelter in place Love has survived Through hard times before When I think of the things Our love has endured I'm willing to wait I'm willing to wait I'm willing to Willing to wait No matter how long it takes Willing to wait Willing to wait We take walks together Stand six feet apart When I cry I can't it breaks my heart It's hard to hold on to All the things we had planned I say I can't do this No, that I can When it's over, we'll gather With friends and metamors I can't sleep, I write songs Stretch metaphors Willing to wait Willing to wait Willing to wait Willing to wait No matter how long it takes is encrypted the messages disappear you signal photos and texts 
longing and fear This is all over I will throw a huge show And I will invite you And I hope you will go We will make love Nights upon days will make up for lost time in so many ways. Willing to wait, willing to wait, willing to wait, willing to wait. No matter how long it takes. Thanks, y'all. Later.